Thanks for having me, brother. Once yeah, again. Yeah, definitely. So Nick, you are representing a ministry. You're a friend of mine. Um, mm-hmm. Most of the people on this call do not know who you are. You're a bit new to yeah. my community, my environment, what we're doing. Mm-hmm. So I'd like you to definitely give me a, a background, spend some time on this, a little about yourself, how we connected and talk about the ministry, talk about the different things that you're, you're working on. And mm-hmm. then dive into the financial opportunities that you know this particular ministry has to offer, or anything else that you see in the environment today that you want to you know bring to people's attention. Hey, consider this. Look at this, et cetera, et cetera. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Denzel. So my name is Nicholas Gonzalez. Uh, I represent ICOVEST. ICOVEST is a a sovereign ecclesiastical trust. Um, We teach jurisdictional finance and I've been teaching jurisdictional finance for the last uh, four years at this point. Um, I'm the host of the Financially Lit podcast. So I try to put out some short clip videos on YouTube about what we do. Um, But how I got to meet Denzel, we were actually watching Denzel's channel for uh, the last three or four years as we've been trying to teach our community Velocity Banking and he does such a good job at explaining it and we've been, you know, using him as a a teacher and he didn't even know it. Um, And then then one day, you know, we reached out and I wanted to do some cross collaboration or just see if he was open to the idea of a syndicated effort around life insurance, uh, which we affectionately called TOLI, the trust owned life insurance model. Um, and how we were doing it with our ministry, how we were using these ecclesiastical trusts versus these commercially regulated type trusts and, and what's possible when you do that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, essentially what we try to bring to the family, what we try to bring as our value add to people is, is a syndicated effort to acquire cash flowing vehicles for the family, cash flowing assets in general. Um, what that looks like is we have three asset pools that are currently available. It's called Asset Pool 1, AP1, Asset Pool 2, AP2, and Asset Pool 3, AP3, pretty straightforward. Um, if you're not familiar with what a syndication is or what a syndicated effort is, that's simply our ability as a community to squish funds together for a common goal or a common purpose. Um, in the case of AP1, Asset Pool 1, that common purpose is acquiring cash flowing real estate for the syndicated effort as a whole. So what that looks like is if anybody has the you know wherewithal or financial goals um, or extra cash flow in their life that they're looking to seed places to grow it, uh, maybe you're looking at thinking about getting in real estate yourself or have thought about trying to uh, you know acquire something that cash flows that way. Uh, we give you an opportunity to learn how to get in business for yourself, but not by yourself necessarily. Um, you know, instead of taking all the risk of your own and putting it down at a bank and then going to acquire, you know, a few units, for example, and then, you know, managing them yourself, we have the ability to lower the risk tremendously um, by taking a piece of our wealth and pushing it together with a, 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 the vast community that we have at ICOVEST so that we can use the economies of scale to acquire bigger and better assets than we could have on our own. Um, The point of doing it in an ecclesiastical trust, the way that we do for the church, for our ministry, um, is anything that comes through our ministry is actually qualified capital. Um, If you don't know what that means, it means we're mandatorily tax accepted from the tax code. It's under Title 26, Section 508C1A of the tax code, and and it, it sets our jurisdiction apart from the commercial realm. And it's kind of a paradigm shift of how you view your finances and how, how you're looking at, you know, when I operate over here, I got to give to Caesar what Caesar's is due. You know, you're playing commercially, there's taxes associated with uh, the kind of activities you do when you, you know, buy or sell or you have an income or you create a revenue, things like that. Um, we teach the jurisdictional differences between those types of activities and how you can play the same game but structure them in a way where you are participating through a a church's trust model, our ecclesiastical state's trust model. Anything that we do as community members through this model is qualified capital. So I was trying to get uh, Denzel to understand the concept of how the church operates jurisdictionally and how we teach at ICOVEST Academy these these differences. We made made an academy specifically for this purpose so that we can teach people, you know, this whole paradigm shift that I'm talking about. Um, There's a a very helpful chart that's in the academy. um, It's a a triangle pyramid that defines how law is derived on this planet, how nations see that law and, and how they implement it and how the jurisdictions separate each other. What's very interesting to learn and to come to find out is that ecclesiastical law is 
the tippity top of the food chain for all law on the planet. Every law is derived from that jurisdictionally. You have your um, uh, your common law underneath that, and then you have your maritime admiralty law, and you get into our, our kind of uh, commercial jurisdiction that we all know and love and operate in and pay taxes to normally. So what we're trying to get people to understand is one, that this, this separate jurisdiction exists through the church. We're trying to get people to engage with it so that they, one, know how it operates. Two, if your goals, your financial goals uh, are lined up with trying to acquire cash flowing assets for the family, we could do that through real estate, through our syndicated model. We could do it through our trust owned life insurance model as we're help, Denzel's helping us build that out with a, through our term insurance and our whole life insurance. Um, which is a deep conversation. And I know I'm just trying to be a uh, high level right now, but we can always have those conversations if you'd like to, Denzel. Um, and just trying to take a little bit of page out of what we were talking about earlier that Alex was bringing up um, about funding for small businesses or you know, making sure that you have enough capital or making sure that you have enough runway to get your, uh, your dreams accomplished. Um, we, that's where our AP3 program comes in. It's our asset pool three. It's a staking program for small businesses or large businesses that are looking for capital funding. Um, what it is, is you put 3% into our staking program for our stable coin. And we have a group that we partnered with. They're, they're a private uh, organization called the Prado Group. Uh, they are willing to fund projects that create GDP in America. So if you stake 3% into a small business funding project, they're actually willing to fund 100% of that project. Now, why would they do that? Well, they're looking to have pieces of a bunch of cash flowing assets because they have deep pockets and they have the ability to do that. So they're looking for a 20% equity stake in whatever it is that you're building with this funding that's, uh, that's coming from them. The cool part is, is you have the ability to negotiate with them at the beginning of the deal when you're getting your funding released to you for whatever project that's, that you've uh, outlined, that's been approved, you know, funding's coming your way. Um, you have the ability to buy them out of that 20% equity position. That's called a leveraged buyout. And you can negotiate that over one to seven years. You can even use the cash flow from whatever it is that you built to pay them off for that 20%, reclaim your equity position in uh, whatever asset that you built. You know, that that could be acquiring cash flow in real estate, for example. Um, it could be building your business a little bit uh, farther if you need a capital expenditure, if you're looking to uh, just scale in general. There's many, many scenarios where small businesses need funding, obviously. Um, and it's just one more route that you can explore as a possibility in the marketplace to get something done um, in your expansion efforts. If you maybe you thought about getting in the game, but you haven't had the capital to do it before, but you have the ability to put 3% into something like this to fund 100% of whatever plan you have on your table right now, then I think it's a good opportunity to sit down and explore um, how the inner workings are, you know, ask all the in the weeds questions about how uh, the funding works, how what's tied to it and stuff like that. Um, but let me digress for a second because I, I just explained very quickly at a high level three different syndicated efforts. And I, I want to give it back to Denzel for a second to ask some questions. <laughs> yeah, so you just dropped a, a, a big bomb on us of information. And I'm taking notes on the board here as you um, shared, but I kind of broke it up to three things. You mentioned syndication, yes, right? Sir. That's really pooling a lot of resources from a multitude of people together right to acquire a cash flow vehicle and on mm -hmm. top of that you're saying that you i everyone in this group is able to do that in a totally separate jurisdiction that is labeled as qualified capital which is mandatorily tax accepted and yes sir then you mentioned a um, asset pools where the church itself has cash flow vehicles and opportunities that the church is doing so mm -hmm. what you're saying is i could come in and have like my own ideas in terms of what i want to do but then i can also oh, yeah. participate in what the church and the ministry is actually doing and then you finished up with a, a staking program which which also can be through what the church efforts are or you individually having a business idea and opportunity that you want to exercise in the commercial jurisdiction, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And create the cash flows necessary uh, and the profits to have a viable, successful business. Now, absolutely. With that being said, 
Um, can you guide us in terms of what are the preliminary, like pregame work that someone on this call that's never met you before, brand new, can uh, start doing to say, sure, I'd, I'd like to learn more and, and get involved. Uh, what would be some of the first action steps that you would have someone take? And if there's links involved, if you don't mind dropping that in, in the chat uh, mm -hmm. so that people can take their notes and take action when they're ready. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, first and foremost, I would direct people to the academy. It's icovest.academy, and I will leave the link uh, in the chat for everybody to take down. Um, from there, after we, you know, you start poking around the academy a little bit, step one is kind of the top of the funnel, 50,000 foot overview for what we do at Icovest. Uh, we affectionately call this meeting a CPO. It's a cooperative procurement opportunity. Uh, it's about 20 minutes. Um, and like I said, high level gives you an overview about what we're doing at Icovest. Um, and from there, if it is something that you think that you want to do, uh, we do a seven day free trial at the Academy so that you can get into our community. You can get signed up for our Monday calls and our Wednesday calls. Denzel actually participates on our Monday calls um, almost every week, every other week uh, they're about to give us a whole life insurance update about what we're doing with our trust owned life insurance and our syndicated effort, how we're building that with IcoVest. Wednesday nights is our finance call. So we're, we're bringing everything together, the community, all the leaders get on the Zoom um, so we can discuss the, the cutting edges of what we're doing, the trust that we're building, um, you know, how much funds that we're getting into this uh, effort, growing the community, et cetera. Um, but after the seven day free trial, it's $21 a month to stay enrolled in the academy. Um, but during that seven day free trial, we encourage everybody to submit what we call a capital needs analysis. It's called a CNA. And really all that is, is your willingness to share your financial picture with us. Um, you submit your financial information. We put it into uh, one of our, our spreadsheets so that we can easily work with your data. Um, and then we're trying to try to apply our systems to your scenario so that we can see, is there anything that we can do to help you uh, reach your financial goals? Um, we deploy velocity banking uh, at, like Denzel does. Um, we have a debenture management system for that purpose. Um, we're also going to just try to figure out, you know, based on your net operating income, is there anything that we can do to help you increase cash flow um, or maybe participate in a syndicated effort? Maybe you understand that the dollar is crashing and that you need to protect the value of that wealth. We store silver digitally in our trust for that purpose specifically um, so that, you, you know, it's, it's protected and it's had confiscatable jurisdiction and things like that um, but like i said step one would be going to the academy you know seeing a cpo and then from there i would walk you through every single step after that that i just laid out i would show you where you're going at the academy how to sign up for monday and wednesday um, how to submit your capital needs analysis how to get into the curriculum um, in the school uh, because once you go through the curriculum in the school, there's actually a certification at the end uh, that you can take the, this little test over and over again until you uh, actually pass the exam. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't, um, what's the word, penalize you for getting anything wrong. It just teaches you over and over again um, until you can finally get that certification. Once you get that certification, if this is something that you think that you want to do, we'll show you how to open an ICOvesting account. Um, an IVA, ICOvesting account, is what's necessary to participate and engage with our community at ICOvest. Um, it's simply 21 uh, ounces of silver. It's one-time covestment of 21 ounces, and that doesn't go to me or to Denzel or anything like that. That's simply you funding your account. You know, once you open your account, you have 21 ounces of silver sitting there in the silver position, and you can you know top it up from there at one coin at a time or store significant wealth there. We can roll over, you know, 401ks, IRAs, that kind of stuff to protect the wealth. Um, we'll show you how to leverage that position later to put it into cash flowing vehicles, whether that's real estate, life insurance, our AP3 staking program, uh, et cetera. So um, I, I know I'm saying a lot right now, but I'm just trying to give you as much value as I can uh, while I have you guys here. Yeah, no, that's, this is, I really appreciate you diving deep into that. And this is the type of audience that I, I know can handle it. If they can hear me talk and blabber about interest rates on line of credits and how to offset borrowing costs and how to make a chunk and how da, 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 da. like there these people are definitely going to follow along um, and they will take action um, when they're good and ready so i do appreciate you being here and dropping on this value now i want to kind of compare some of the things that you just said because um, this is going to lead into um, one of the financial opportunities that i'm going to share uh, to close us out for the evening Okay. which is you you just described opportunities that the u.s government can offer right in their True. particular jurisdiction but here you are saying that the church in its own right in its own jurisdiction can do the very same exact 
things, but with these added layers of asset protection, right? Of absolutely really protection from the law that is created and defined by man, but then there's mm -hmm. also God's law. And it's like both, what you're basically saying is both jurisdictions recognize each other and yes. both, both are protected from each other. So it's this separation of, of church and state, which is what you're yes. presenting here. And that mm -hmm. in and of itself is a financial opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I, I really appreciate you sharing that. So